All right, all right, then let's start the class. Remember that we are taking a look at interviews. Well, since we're going to keep talking about interviews, then um, we should talk about what you should know, what you should know about what is correct to do during an interview and what is supposed not to happen. And we call it the do's and don'ts of an interview, of a job interview. Since you are preparing for a job interview, then let's take a look at that. I also prepared a PowerPoint, some PowerPoint slides for that. Since uh, it's easier for me when we have the video conference to just have a uh, guidance. Um, sure enough, uh, you didn't have the chance to have this type of class, but when we uh, use a classroom, uh, normally, I don't use this uh, visual aids that much because I do interact a lot in between the lines of your desk. But anyways, we have to adapt and that's okay. That's perfect. It's part of evolving. Don't stop evolving. All right. So job interview and the topic, like it says here, what we're going to be talking about today is do's and don'ts of a job interview. So what it's okay, in other words, what it is okay to do and what mm -mm, is not okay to do because you can, you may end up with not a good result. So um, last week we took a chance to look at a few videos. Even uh, one of the videos was in Spanish and it was okay, it, it's perfectly fine. But uh, in those videos, you had the chance to see how an interview could go. Uh, one of them, it was a little exaggerated, but it, it helped us to see that you're gonna have some candidates most of the time when there are interviews going on about job, uh, there's going to be more than just you going to that place. So there's going to be people waiting, uh, same as you. And then, uh, Somebody's going to call your name and then you're going to go to another uh, room, probably. And then uh, you're going to be asked a lot of questions. And depending on your answers, that's part of if you can get the job or not. But there is something more than just the questions and answers. The interview is something more. The job interview actually requires a set of everything in the surrounding. What am I referring to? That's what we're going to cover today. We're going to cover things like the way you dress, the way um, what you should speak, but just in a little bit of it, the way that you should be careful about uh, what you answer. Yes, it's part of it, but also the way if you are on time, if you go on time or not, what could happen and how are you perceived? So the whole process of getting ready and yes, studying, researching about the company, yes, that's very, very important. But it's also very, very important to be on time, to go there, to greet the people that is uh, in the front desk, for example, who is in the reception on, on any company. So, um, that's what we're gonna cover. And with that said, let's start. So like I said, today, we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts. And first of all, we're going to cover the do's. The do's, what you're supposed to be doing, okay? And of course, I'm inviting you, all of you, to please participate. Feel free to participate. And remember that you can get uh, more points on attitude for all of the times that you speak, and that's even better. So let's see, the do's. First of the do's, this, is, uh, go, this goes preferably for all the girls or women that aren't here. When you are going to go for the interview, you should consider about the way you dress. There's not a big problem or huge problem with men because they don't wear skirts. But if you're going to wear a skirt, you should consider that that should reach up to the knees. 
If you see the picture over here on your left, if you are going to wear a skirt, this length is the formal length. Anything shorter than that is a no, okay? So that should be the length of the skirt. No shorter than that. And of course, it's much better to just wear pants, okay? For men, it's about the same, wear some pants. And jeans is not recommended. You could wear jeans, but it depends if you know the company very well. So having a set of pants, having a black set of pants for men and women, it's always recommended because you can wear it for any time. You can wear it for, for anything that you have. Maybe you have a family gathering, you can use that those black pants also. But if you have an interview, you can use those black pants. It, it's never wrong to have those. So um, I strongly recommend you, if you don't have some black pants, get yourself a pair of those, okay? Because it's very useful to have it in your wardrobe, on your clothes, in your closet, <laughs> okay? So uh, yes, and in terms of uh, attire, since we're talking about what you should wear or not, in terms of a shirt, a shirt is usually recommended to have a dress shirt, a dress shirt, which is normally will be a long sleeve. It will be all the way until here. It's a long sleeve shirt. And what we can strongly recommend for you is like, because also again, you can use this type of clothing for other occasions also. So it will be very good if you can have a white dress shirt, okay? A white one, it's never wrong. But if you like colors, that's perfect. You can have in different colors. You just have to keep them in a safe type of colors. Just try to keep them in one color, not many colors. You can have a blue, which is one of the, it's one of the colors that showcases that you are a person that is uh, responsible and serious. So uh, yeah, either a white or blue shirt, it's fine for any occasion. You could also wear a something, uh, also a black one, but in terms of a shirt, it's, it's like, it's too much of black if you're wearing a black pants. Um, you could consider any, any type of blue, like light blue or like navy blue, which is fine. Um, what other colors? All of those colors that are like in, in the light sort of tone, like pink for women and men, it's the same, but Pink and in a very light tone, that's fine. And it's the same with purple and orange, but if it is in a very um, light tone. You don't, you don't wanna uh, wear it, a tone that is kind of fluorescent or too heavy, that's a no. And in terms of, like I was saying, black pants and also a, you could have a navy, navy blue pants. That's also very useful. Those are the colors that are uh, very advisable to just have a, a set of those. So you wanna have those. If you don't have them right now in your wardrobe, meaning in your closet, if you don't have a pair of black pants or a navy blue pants, get yourself one because it's going to be helpful. I'm telling you. So you need to prepare for the interview, not only in your mind for the questions and answers that you're gonna be uh, receiving and what you need to answer back. You also need to make sure that you have the clothing, what is required for to dress. Connie, yes, go ahead. You have something uh, to add to it. 
في واحد yeah I I wanna ask you what do you think about brown color because many people think that the brown color doesn't reflect your personality personality well but I think that is very formal here it goes brown it's good but not so good I personally like the color and as you can see it's I'm wearing something sort of like brownish right now but here's the thing psychologically speaking someone that wears a set of let's say like a, a, a brown suit like it's a brown suit like the one that this girl in the right is wearing like this suit but in brown the problem with brown is that it reflects the reflection of the person that wears brown it's a little lower it kind of shows like the personality of that person is not strong so that that person doesn't have a strong personality so you want to avoid at least for the first impressions for first impression is a no no for first impression and also for something like if if you know that there's something like really formal just don't wear brown it's It, it, that's the message that the color gives. It, it gives a, a lower personality. It gives the understanding to the person who is going to interview you that you are uh, insecure, that you might have been more nervous. So that's why you need to avoid brown. After you're working and if you like the color and if you uh, like to wear uh, a set of pants that are brown or if you want to have a jacket that is brown, that's perfectly fine. But just be aware that not for first impression. Because yes, psych psychologically speaking, it, it means that. It has that meaning. That's why you need to avoid brown. Okay? Yes? Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so let's see the next do. What's the next do? Pay attention to your personal grooming and cleanliness. If you can see the picture that is, I need to uh, take out my picture so you cannot see me. Uh, grooming is referring to arreglo, arreglo personal. So you need to be very careful about how you groom yourself and that's why I chose that picture where um, there is a, a man that is getting his his face fixed and in terms of shaving in a well manner when there is hairy people there a lot of men had a lot of facial hair so if you are one of those men with facial hair you want to make sure that your beard your your beard is very well groomed that is cut very well you don't want to have that um uh, how do you call it the, the the big bird um how do you call that one it's for for uh country people no it's funny way but i'm thinking that the way that they call it in spanish is leñador la barba de leñador so um that's a no when you're looking for a job it's because it looks dirty it doesn't look clean so it's definitely a no and also i included these two pictures where you can see men and women um i'm also including if you can see connie there is a, a way that you have a little bit of brown but not everything in brown and so it's not the whole set of the of, of the clothing in brown But also, that's also considered formal, but the last three of them are even better, where you are mixing a little more of black into it because it gives you, a, it gives the understanding of a more serious personality. And you need to make sure that in your grooming and cleanliness, you do your hair. So, 
it's different if you're doing your hair for a party because that you are going to put a lot of attention on it and if you're going to wear it like big and stuff but when you're going for an interview you want to keep it simple but in a way that your face that's for men and women your face should be clean so if you are one of those that likes to wear the hair in front of your face for an interview it's better to just put your your hair a little back and if you can just use a ponytail that's fine also you can wear it down too just make sure that your face is shown complete because it's easier for the interviewer to find you the the best or bigger reason why the curriculum vitae has your picture is because when you're going to go for an interview then the person who is going to call you is looking at the picture of you and then that's how they go to the room where you are in and they can go straight to you and ah hi connie and then they greet you because they're seeing your picture but if they cannot recognize you from the picture to the person that is in front because it has different hair color or because there's a lot of makeup on it, that's a no. And, and now let me just cover that. That's for men and women because men also, men, men can also wear makeup. That's perfectly fine and it's normal in around the world. It's perfectly fine because uh, especially metrosexual men, that they take care a lot of their face. So uh, they do wear makeup, which is fine. As long as the makeup, it's considered just uh, natural. You wanna keep it natural. I'm telling you again, it's not the same as going to a party that going for a job interview. You gotta be very careful with makeup, with the lipstick. It's the same thing. Lipstick should be kept in a color that is close to natural. No red, no black, no purple, no, no, nothing that is too strong. And eyeshadows, all of those, you want to keep them natural, in a natural way. Avoid those um, eyelashes, the, the, the false, the false eyelashes that you put on your eyes, that they look or that they make your eyes look bigger, uh -uh, that's a no for a job interview. You wanna look more natural and clean. And one thing that I need to remind you also is about perfume. Perfume, or uh, that's for, for women, for men, it's called cologne. Uh, so perfume for a job interview, here's the thing. You should avoid it, avoid it, should not wear any, or wear just a minimum amount, just a minimum. Why? Here is the thing, because you don't know who is going to interview you. And there's a lot of people who is very sensitive to the aromas, to the smells, and they can get um, affected by the smell of your perfume. And if that's the first impression that you are giving them, that you are giving them an allergy from your perfume, that's a very bad start on your interview. So yes, you need to avoid perfume or if, you, if you're going to wear perfume, there is another thing. If you, you can just wear a minimum amount, like just one and, um, you can uh, just try to wear the perfume an hour or two hours before the interview so that you give it time to set on your body and to uh, evaporate a little bit. So by the time that you go to the interview, you don't smell much. Okay, so you need to make sure about that. Of course, wear, uh, don't be sweaty. You, you need to be looking very clean, not sweating. So uh, in terms of that, um, you just want to make sure that you are clean. For men, the hair, because I was talking about the hair for women, that you can wear it down or you can wear it up on a ponytail, that's fine. But for men, it, you 
want to make sure also that your hair is looking the best way. That it looks like you took time to put it uh, to to put it on a clean way. If it's short, it's better, but I don't see how long hair could be bad as long as you have it up. Okay, so you need to be careful about that. It, you don't want to, if you have long hair, it shouldn't be um, just wear down. No, that's a no. And in terms of like what you're going to wear, like I was telling you again, it's a set of uh, dress pants. If you want to wear a suit, a complete suit, that's also fine. Some companies, they don't care about the whole suit as long as you look good, clean, and groomed. Groom and clean, that's what is important. But to look groomed and clean, the, the your set of clothes is also important. Like I was saying, a good set of dress pants and a nice shirt. And if you see... All of these pictures that I'm showing you here, everyone is wearing an, a white shirt. It's just white shirt because you can wear it with everything. And that's what I was telling you. If you're going to invest in clothes, for starters, for people who are starting on this, just get yourself a nice white shirt and a set of uh, either navy blue or black and that's perfect. Yes. And in terms of shoes, shoes for men, can you see? Shoes should be dress shoes, not tennis. No, that's a no. Tennis shoes is for sports. Um, <laughs> I would think, well, that <laughs> you need to groom yourself up. You should put, as long as you wear your hair. Uh, up in a ponytail and, and very groomed bien arregladito and your beard should be just uh, very well groomed also bien arreglada la barba no larga okay don't long don't get it on a big length and um, what's that new about ah the shoes shoes dressing shoes and also for women for women, it's a little more tricky because women tend to wear heels. Heels. And high heels, ugh, it's a no. You should, if you're going to wear heels, just make sure that you keep them to a maximum, a maximum. So it should be less or equal to five centimeters that, that height. Because higher than that, it's riskful. You can, you can step yourself into a very weird situation and you don't want that to happen. So it's better to just keep it. I mean, we as engineers, we prefer no heels. So it should be better to use something like the men do. Just a dress shoes or a dressing shoes, simple dressing shoes. That's a good thing to do. And, and I'm telling you, it's much better, especially for us engineers, to just go, away, uh, go ahead with dressing shoes, with no heels. Because some interviews in some companies, they, uh, they give you the interview. And if they are liking you, probably they give you a tour of the company. And if you're wearing heels, high heels, you can't, you can't. You cannot go on the tour because you are going to end up without feet. So it's better to just wear no heels, just uh, flat, flat shoes, flat shoes, no heels. Okay, so that's the best recommendation ever for shoes. But if you work in a place where there are some risks, you have to cut your hair and beard for safety. Yes, Gabby, that's true. Uh, but that will depend on the companies. In my personal perspective, it will be better to just cut it and, and shave yourself. But it will depend on the company. 
And if you know the company ahead, you, you can actually call them before your interview. You can call them and ask if they do have a dress code. If they tell you about the dress code, you're safe. You can ask if you can uh, wear your beard and that's fine. If they're, if they're okay with it, just go with it. Why are you going to cut it or, or shave yourself if they're okay with it? So it's, you can also do that. Call ahead. Call ahead. Call them to ask them about the dress code. And if you don't have the phone or something, it's just go ahead with the normal thing. Shave yourself, cut your hair, and wear dressing pants, nice shoes, and a dress shirt. And that's fine. And also, I wanted to also include about cleanliness. Since we're going on uh, uh, through a pandemic, take a look at this uh, last picture that I included here. I wanted to show you this, that if you're going for an interview, remember that all of the rules these days through the pandemic, you need to wear the face mask. Make sure that you're wearing the face mask. Make sure that you are taking your distance in between people and that you carry with you a, a little bottle of, of hand sanitizer that you have it right with you, because you need to make sure that you are considering your health, but you're considering the health of the people around you, okay? So uh, make sure to remember that. And if you take a look at these people here, they seem to be ready for an interview. They are dressing fine, and they are sitting properly, they're waiting. So that's the way that you should behave during the interview, okay? So let's take a look at the next one. I'm taking a lot of time with everyone. Know the exact time and location for your interview because they may have called you and they have told you or, or through an email, hey, uh, yes, you have, a, you have a, an interview next Thursday which is actually tomorrow, uh -huh, but at what time? So you need to make sure that about the time, you need to ask them at what time is it? And maybe they are gonna tell you, oh, it's going to be at 2 p.m. Okay, and then you need to make sure about the address, the address of the place. That's why I wanted to use this picture of a GPS. You need to make sure on where is the interview going to happen and about the time you need to make sure that you know where and when because you need to find the place okay if it is here in your hometown that's perfectly fine because you already know the place but if you're going let's say let's just say that uh you get an interview in Ciudad Obregón you are not familiar with that city so you need to make sure and the best advice for me is like, if your interview is on Friday, for example, go ahead a day before, go on Thursday, find the place, look it up on your GPAs, go over there. If you're driving or take a taxi or, or, or take a bus, go over there, make sure that you know where to go and you can calculate the time that it takes you from your hotel room or from the house of your friends or, or the house of your uh, relatives that you're staying at. If it takes you an hour to get there and if your interview is at 2 p.m., then if it takes you an hour, then you're supposed to go out of the house around 12 or 12.30 p.m. Because remember that you need to be on time. So if it takes you an hour, you need to plan ahead. That's why I will recommend you, if it is in a different city, go the day before and find out how long does it take you to get there, to get there. Try to find out the best way about the place, how to get there, because you don't want to make lows, to get lost, getting lost at the time of your, of your interview is a big no because you cannot make the excuse. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't get here on time. It is around 2.30 p.m. Not two. And you get there at 2.30 and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm here late, but I have an interview. 
that's the wrong thing. You started with the wrong foot. They're gonna tell you, okay, well, but your time is up, sorry, goodbye. You lost your chance. So that's why you need to plan ahead, okay? So I hope that you are understanding this part because it is very, 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 very important. And talking about the time, you need to arrive early, at least 10 minutes before the interview. At least 10 minutes, the most recommended time would be around 20 minutes. If you're earlier than that, if you're 40 or 30 minutes early, you just wait outside. Like this person just stay outside. And then when it is around 15 minutes, 15 to 10 minutes that are left for the time set for the interview, then you can start and getting inside the, the building where you're gonna get the interview and then get yourself to that people that is uh, on the reception or reception desk and greet that person. And then go ahead and say, hi, hello, I am Dinora Monroy. I'm here for an interview. My interview is at 2 p.m. and I receive an email from such and such person and so on. And so the other person is going to confirm, oh, okay, so your name is Dinora Monroy. Yeah, let's check it. Good. Uh, take a seat, please. Uh, Somebody is going to come and call you. So you're safe. Also, you should consider around this, this time, like 10 to 20 minutes. That's perfectly fine because you can also, since you're nervous, you feel very nervous, you can also go to the restroom restroom or bathroom, whatever they have before the time. Why do you wanna go there? Because you're feeling nervous. You wanna go and uh, just free your body. Consider yourself, put yourself in front of the mirror and take the position of a powerful person. Tell yourself that you're gonna do good and that's it, you're ready, okay? So consider the time, please. Next thing, treat all the people that you find, that you encounter with courtesy and respect. Administrative assistants and receptionists also have first impressions and frequently share their opinions with the interviewers. And that's why I show these two different pictures. The one in the right, you can see that that's a receptionist. That's someone that will greet you at the entrance of, of an office. And I chose this other picture on the left, which is supposed to be very important people, VIP people. So normally for VIP people, you're going to treat them well. Hi, welcome, hello, um, come over here. Thank you very much and so on. So that's the thing everyone should be treated the same way. To the receptionist, you should also say, hi, hello, uh, thank you very much for having me. How are you doing today? Are you having a good day? Everything counts. Like it is said here, they frequently share their opinions. The interview starts the moment that you enter the building, the moment that you open the door, and someone sees you. That person is not the interviewer, the person who is going to be asking the question, no. But your interview started already because everyone is watching you. That's why you need to be fine, calm down, very nice, respectful, greet the other people around saying hello, good morning, good afternoon, Introduce yourself. Remember again, remember the interview starts the moment that you open the door to enter to that place because everyone is watching. So if you start like moving around in your chair and playing, if you take your cell phone and start playing because you are killing time, ugh, that's a big no. 
because like I'm telling you, you are being interviewed without even knowing. They are watching you. It's like Big Brother. <laughs> they are watching you. Next one, offer a firm handshake. Always to the person who is going to interview you, the interviewer. and you, a firm handshake, like the one that I'm showing you here in these two pictures. It needs to be firm, not very strong. Don't push it too much, like, oh, I'm very strong. Um, I am like uh, the best fighter in the world. No, nobody cares about that. And you could damage the nerves of the other person. So you just need to be firm, very firm like the one that is showing here, a very firm handshake. I know that right now, because of the pandemic, this shouldn't be happening, but this will depend on the company. So make sure that you ask ahead. If they offer you the hand, you automatically have to do a handshake. If they just do a bow like this, well, just do that one. If they just salute you like that, do the same. Do as you see. Okay? Yes. Uh, another do. Show a positive attitude during the interview. The interviewer is evaluating you as a potential co-worker. Just imagine if you start like complaining or saying something negative, something wrong. Like, ah, no. it, it's just that in my previous job, I didn't like the people that work with me. So uh, I didn't want it to go there for my internship. So that's what I'm coming here. I heard that you're really nice. Mm. That's not the best positive attitude. So you want to keep yourself positive. Um, I chose these pictures because they are smiling. But also you need to be careful about when you smile, that it should be real, not fake. So just try to show yourself in a positive way, okay? Another one is maintain eye contact during the interview. If you take a look at the picture on the left that I shows here, this woman is just looking down a little bit. So uh, for the most part of the interview, you need to make sure that you are keeping good eye contact like the person here this this man over here in the right is trying to look uh, at the other person okay so you need to uh, remember that body language says a lot about you the, your body language is going to help you get the job so you need to make sure that you look confident and one of the best ways to look confident is to maintain the eye contact. The eye contact. Look at the person who is interviewing and look them in the eye. Okay? How do you learn to do that? You practice. Same as what we keep on telling you about everything. You need to practice this. So make sure to practice before going on your interview. Another do is about the questions. Like we said before, respond to questions and back up your statements about yourself with specific examples whenever it's possible. You must remember that you had a homework about 40 questions and of course your answers and questions and answers. And you are supposed to give the answers, but look at this. This is the best advice for an answer. Please try to give specific examples whenever it's possible about something that had happened to you. For example, those questions that, that were about, can you tell me about a situation when you encounter some conflict and how did you solve it? So you need to make sure that you are actually talking about an example that happened to you. It could have been when, when you were in school. You can say like, okay, 
uh, you know, in my when and when I was studying in, in in my school, we used to have these big projects, with, which are semester projects, and for different classes, and they were we called them um, production line, and it was it was about running a production line, and it was very very stressful situation because the first time that we tried, we had to work the whole group together. And we never worked together as a whole group. We were always used to work in set of five or six people together. But that those times it was like 20 people together. It was stressful. And we used to fight a lot. And it was very hard. But me and a few of, of my classmates decided to just put aside all of the conflict. We started talking. We started the dialogue within within us, and we found out that the ideas that everybody was given were good. So we decided to try one idea, and if that worked, we were gonna go with that idea, and it worked. So the first time that we tried it, it worked, and we kept it that way. And so the conflict stopped, and it worked out. Ah, okay. So now you give me an example of your life and how you acted. That's what they want to hear. So you need to remember that you need to give specific examples. That's what you need to prepare about that. And if you don't understand the question, you can ask for clarification. You can ask again, uh, excuse me, can you repeat the question? Because I understood that you're asking me this and that. Is, am I understanding correct? Uh, pardon me, can you say it again? Can you give me a minute to think about? And that's okay. Remember that every question is a test. So when they say, how are you? The first question, you need to reply. Goal oriented, I'm good. Thank you. I'm happy to be here because it's been my dream to work here. So I, I already know that this is the first step. Step. Thank you very much. And how are you today? So now you're showing your interest. You need to make sure that you have the best answers for every question, for every possible question that may happen. Be true in your responses, but don't rumble on forever. Be concise on your wording. So you need to make sure that your brain is working properly and that you know what your responses would be. So that's what it's referring here. Be concise in your wording. That's why, again, even if it sounds like very tiring, but that's why you need to practice those questions and answers. You need to know what you're going to say. You need to be concise when you are responding. And you need to look, take a look at this picture over here. You need to look confident in your body language and in your words and what you're saying also. It's way important. Like I'm telling you, everything around it's important. Everything counts. Be honest and be yourself. Ah, dishonesty gets discovered. Ah, like an example. Huh. I, I heard this thing and, and it's a true story, but I'm not going to tell you the, the whole story because I need to cover up for the person who happened to, to do that. But in her curriculum, the CV or resume, there was a, a woman who wrote down that she knowed Excel, Microsoft Excel, 100%. You know what that means? That she's an expert, a complete expert in Excel. But once they started working, of course she didn't know 100%. She probably didn't even know like 50%. It should have been like less than 20% of that software. So it's like, ugh, that's a lie. And dishonesty always gets discovered. 
or like saying you you will say like oh i know english 80 percent and like the the example that we saw last last class it was about german that she said that she knew german and it was a lie and he gets discovered all the time so uh, that's a no you should avoid lying yeah it should always be and yes valeria like i said yeah it wasn't oh my god exactly when i heard about that it wasn't from it was from our school it was from our university but it was not from it was not from engineering thankfully it was from the other major it was from the business administration major but uh, anyways it's like you feel guilty because it's it's a person that represents your school also so it's like ah man you shouldn't do that you you don't be dishonest always tell tell the truth in your curriculum and in your answer tell the truth because again uh they're going to see how you behave and and if they hire you for one skill that supposedly you have and you end up not having, you're gonna get in trouble. So be very careful about that. Have intelligent questions prepared to ask the interviewer. There's always going to be, uh, most of it at the end, at the end of the interview, they're gonna tell you, do you have questions for me? Do you have questions? Oops, questions for me? And your answer should be yes. You also need to prepare to ask questions about the company, the people, the environment uh, over there. You need to show them that you are interested. If you say, no, thank you, I'm, I'm fine. That's a big no. Because if you said no, you are actually saying that you are not interested. So the interview should be a two-way street. You can ask what kind of employee that they are looking for in return with an explanation of how you, or how you feed the description. There is a set of questions. Look here, I found uh, this in, in, in this blog written by Underwood Alice. Uh, there is 25 over here at, at the bottom. You can find the source, 25 smart questions you will ask on an interview. You can ask in an interview and is from a Grammarly blog. The link is over there. You can just click on it. I strongly, strongly recommend all of you to please take the time, go click on it and take a look at the questions and put them on your notebook, study them. Make sure that you know what questions to ask when they ask you. Do you have any questions for me? Tienes alguna pregunta para nosotros? Yes. You need to say yes. And you need to ask. A few of them, I, I only show you five of the examples. Can you describe an average day at the office? What char characteristics and abilities does a successful employee here generally have? What are the key responsibilities of this position? And do you expect them to change within the next year or so? What are the upcoming projects I'd be working on during my first few weeks? Ah, you're showing a lot of interest in here. You are actually assuming that, hey, you are already hiring me. I'm gonna be working here for you. Are there gaps in the current team skill set or experience that my position is meant to fill? And Oh, this question is really interesting because they're saying, oh, the skill set. And maybe they answer, they give you an answer back like, yes, uh, actually, we need someone that knows a lot about AutoCAD. Immediately you go like, oh, that's great because I happen to know I'm not proficient or 100% on that one, but I do know about how to use the software. And I... When I was in school, we did a lot of projects when I use it and I'm confident that I can help you with that. Oh, then the interviewer is like, hmm, this person is actually good. So now you are separating yourself from the rest. 
now you're showing that you are a good candidate for the position. And that's what you want to fulfill. You want to show them that you are the best candidate. Okay, so those were a set of do's. But now let's see the dawn, dawn, the no, 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 what you are not supposed to do. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Again, I start with the girls. Don't wear a blouse or a dress too revealing. Okay, and this normally do doesn't happen for men. So that's why it's just directed for women, for the girls. Very short skirts. Are a no. Short blouses that show your belly button is also a no. Blouses that show your chest is a no. Or even if the blouse is showing your um, part of your arms over here, that's a no still because that's not formal and it's distracting. So don't wear too revealing clothing. It's a no. That type of clothing is for something else, not for an interview. So this is a big no. That's a no. And about jewelry. Don't wear too much jewelry. Probably you are like me, like you like to wear a big earrings, a lot of um, probably a big chain and something else like maybe some rings for a job interview. You don't know much about the company. Maybe later on, if you see, and if it is okay with the dress code that you can wear something like this after you work with them, you're perfectly fine. But this is for an, an interview, it's a big no. It's a no for an interview. Yes, uh, Connie, that's the thing. Uh, for the interview, you just have to consider them as a minimum. You can wear uh, earrings, but a simple one, a small one. You cannot even see the ones that I'm wearing right now. Just small ones, and that's it. You should consider the minimum. If you're going to wear um, some rings, it could be uh, the rings, or in terms of rings, these things are a big no. It's a don't, don't do that. For rings, you can wear either, if you are married, the marriage ring, or a, the class ring. The ones for your university, once you graduate, you have a class ring, that's okay because it, it's considered that these two rings are part of the formal attire. That's considered okay. That's fine. But other than that, something like what he's wearing or what she's wearing here is a big no. No. And long earrings, it's also a no. Okay, remember that one. And what you can wear is small, small earrings, a very simple rings, and also a watch. A watch is okay. You can. You can wear a watch and that's fine. That's part of something that is actually common on an attire. So it's like just a watch and one of the rings, if it is your marriage ring, that's fine. Or your class ring, that's on. El anillo de graduación o de casado. Esto. Y un en, en reloj. Aretes pequeñitos and that's it. Okay. Don't wear clothing with sequins. <laughs> Con lentejuelas. <laughs> o mucho brillo. It's better to be conservative. Especially for girls, but maybe, I don't know about the, the, the likes of you guys. Maybe you have one shirt that has those things. Uh, these are clothing for clubbing, for having fun, for going to a party but this is considered not good for an interview. Even the one that is here at the bottom, her sweater has some sequins over here. You cannot look at them like very fine, but her sweater has sequins, lentejuelas. So it's like, no, that's a no. 
So you should wear a different sweatshirt. Okay. Yes. No lentejuelas. No, no sequins. Don't make negative comments about previous employers or other. Like we said, you should keep positive. Positive, positive. Anything that you say negative is telling that you are a negative and toxic person. So you don't want to be like that. So you want to make sure that you don't speak wrong about other people. Don't falsify application materials or answers to interview questions. Because you can be like Pinocchio. So you don't want to be like that. You need to give proper responses, true responses, not lies. Lies are a no. And it's to answers or even to in the resume. It has to be something truthful. Okay, we talk a little bit about that one. Don't arrive late. I already said about the consequences. If you are late, maybe you just missed the interview or you start with the wrong foot. Like I said, you need to go there and at least 10 minutes before the time. And if you can, it's better to go like around 20 minutes because we said that before, you can go to the restroom and calm yourself down and make sure that you feel better once you go to the restroom, okay? Yes, don't arrive late. That's a big super no. And if they ask you, when they tell you, do you have any questions? Please, please, please avoid the question of saying about the salary. Tiene preguntas, sí, ¿cuánto puedo ganar? ¿O cuánto me van a pagar? It's okay to ask, but once the other person, the interviewer, que el entrevistador te lo diga, él te lo tiene que mencionar, del salario, del sueldo, no tú. You are not supposed to ask because it's, it's understood very wrong. Don't ask about salary and benefit issues until your interviewer brings up the subject because you don't want to give the impression that you are only interested in the salary. You should show that you are interested in the job position. Okay? So make sure about not asking this before the other person takes the topic or brings the topic out. Don't act as though you will take any job or are desperate for employment. That also looks very wrong, very bad. Don't act like that, like, oh, please, I I'll do anything that you can, uh, that you need. I just need to work. It's like, ah, take that person out. Put it. Because you need to show a strong personality, not someone that is uh, on, on, on a lower Case on that one. So this is a big no. Don't act like you're desperate. Another don't, don't be unprepared for typical interview questions. Like I said, you already have those 40 questions, but there are more. But the typical ones, you have them with you. You need to be prepared. I mean, the most typical one, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your weaknesses, your strengths. Tell me about uh, why you are interested in getting this job. Tell me, uh, or, or what would you do if you happen to have this type of situation? You need to be prepared. Don't be unprepared. You may not be asked all of them in every interview, but being unprepared looks foolish. Se ve tonto. And you don't want that. You don't want to look like a fool. Okay, so you need to make sure about that one. Another one, don't refer to the interviewer as dude. Because dude is a friend. He's one from your gang. 
is another person that acts like you, but the, this is a potential co-worker. You should just refer to the other person there. You need to remember the name. When you do the handshake, when you introduce yourself, they're gonna tell you their name. Remember the name. You can have a little, uh, notebook and write it down over there but you need to remember you need to remember you need to remember the name if the other person said that his name was uh gonzalo you need to remember that his name is gonzalo probably he said that oh i am engineer gonzalo okay gonzalo and uh, martinez you can uh uh, Ingeniero Martinez, le puedo hacer una pregunta. But if you say like, hey, dude, compa, usted me dice. No, that's a no. This is like using a word like this one here, like compa <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> Oiga. In Spanish, of course, right? So it's like, dude. No, remember the names. You need to remember, you need to make sure. And when you do the handshake, if you didn't hear again, you can ask, can you repeat your name, please? Can you tell me your name again? I didn't hear it correctly. Okay, yeah, I'm Gonzalo Martinez. Uh, okay, Ingeniero Gonzalo, uh, good. Okay, so don't go ahead and call them like they are your friends because they are not. Another one, don't go too extreme with your posture. Don't slouch and don't sit rigidly on the edge of the chair. You need to sit just comfortable and the most formal possible. Like what I'm showing here in these pictures. You take a look at the pictures on your right. This position is to slouch. This one is also showing that you're bored. This one is like, ah, oh, I wanna get out of here. This one is better. It's preferable to just look at like that one. This one looks boring, boring. A little too much confidence and this crossing of the legs doesn't look good. So you wanna keep it more close to this one. This one is a yes. And if you're standing, take a look at all of the movements. Remember that your body language is telling a lot about yourself. So you need to make sure that you have an open body, like the one that is showing over here. But, but remember the arms over here, they're kind of like saying that she's defensive. So you need to loosen up your arms. If you put your hands on your pockets, it looks like you are impatient. So no, everything is showing something. If you cross your arms, it, you're being kind of aggressive. So no, that's a no. If, you, if you're looking like this, it's sort of like men, menacing. So it's like, uh, no, that's a no. Crossing your legs one in front of the other, it's like don't want to communicate. When you're using this position, you are probably saying like, mm, you are considering too much, probably lying. So it's like, ah, make sure to look for a posture that looks more natural. And that is telling that you are relaxed, but not too much. Okay, that you you need to show you that you are comfortable. I know it's hard. Everything that you're seeing, it's probably making you more nervous, but it's part of life. You just need to be prepared. Oh, and one, it's probably one of the last ones, this one, but don't chew gum. No, this isn't big, super no, 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 no for interviews. No, because you're gonna be opening your mouth. You're gonna be making sounds. You can end up 
playing with your gum. And that's a super big no. So don't dare, don't dare to even carry gum with you when you're going for an interview. No, just don't do it. No. But, but no, no, it's a no. It's just a no, never, ever. I know that chewing gum, it's even, it's even okay for uh, healthy purposes, but for a job interview, no, don't. Okay, don't chew gum. And of course, if you are a smoker, don't smoke or slurp on any drinks. If they offer you a drink, a coffee or water, and if you are drinking like, nobody wants to listen to you slurp. Like, let me show you something like that. Did you hear that sound? Ah, that's disgusting. That's a no. Don't smoke because most of the companies are no smoking or a smoke free environment. So if you're a smoker, I'm sorry for you, but this is not a place to smoke. So you need to make sure about not smoking before the interview, even like that, because you know that that's smelly and smells really bad. So if you're going to smoke, just avoid smoking at least an hour before going for the interview at least an hour because like I'm saying, the smell smells very bad. And those sounds, when you're drinking, avoid them all, okay? So uh, yeah, most of the information that I've been showing you right now, it was from a lesson from the Florida Department of Education. And you have the link over there if you want to read a little more about that. It, the do's and don'ts come at the end of the document. It has more information, so you can feel free to just go ahead and, and look at them. And I'm recommending a few websites that can help you with this. Uh, there is like flashcards that can give you vocabulary. There is a rest, how to, write a resume using Microsoft Word, using templates. It's a video and you can watch it. At, it's very simple and it's a fast way to, to do your resume. Now that you are complete with your draft, go ahead and look it up on those tutorials because they're good. Like I'm, I'm telling you in very uh, few steps and in, in very few minutes, you can finish a resume or a curriculum vitae using a template in Word. Uh, how to write a great resume, three simple steps, more information about it, that's another video. Then job application quiz uh, the, from the Utah Education and Network. They have a quiz and they have a, uh, the answers to that quiz. I already downloaded it, it's really nice. And that's part of like the work that you're gonna be doing this week. I'm gonna give you those questions and you're gonna answer them. Why is a quiz? Because also, when you're going for an interview, some companies give you something to fill up, some, something to write down about other information about yourself. And so uh, you need to learn how to answer those also. And resumes for young people with no experience, how to write a resume. There is more information about that. That's another video. Job prof guide to better interview flashcards to help you aid your job interview. I strongly recommend to click on that one. And the last one, how to get a job, uh, experiences about getting the job. So I also recommend that one. Those, all of the, these websites, you can go and click on those and uh, find out about the information that they have to offer to you. So it's, it's very important, of course. Any questions? Those were the do's and don'ts. Uh, globally speaking, taking them in, generally speaking and globally speaking, taking all the do's and don'ts about what you are expected to be doing on an interview and what you are not supposed to be doing on the job interview. What you're going to be doing, like I said, for this week, you're going to have a questionnaire, a set of questions. 
and that you have to answer is sort of like a quiz and you need to understand what to answer. And also I'm gonna give you a discussion, a forum discussion for these do's and don'ts. So I wanna I wanna keep having a conversation about this. Because the more the more that we talk about it, the more experience that we start getting. And so that you're going to get more prepared for your job interview. What happens if we have tattoos, says Agustin. Okay, most of the companies right now, they don't care. But when you decide to get a tattoo, you need to decide to have it in a place in your body that you can also hide them. Like if you have a tattoo uh, over here in your arm, just with your dress shirt, that's fine. And you have it covered. And yeah, because it is understood that those are for you, but for some people, it might be offensive. It's just something that the society doesn't accept heal. They doesn't accept uh, everything. So um, it will depend on the company and it will depend on the person or on your interviewer, the person who is interviewing you. Uh, like I'm saying, nowadays it shouldn't be that much of important, but still, still is dependable on, on, it's very subjective to the person who is going to interview you. They may be okay and they may not be okay with it. So that's why you want to cover up, cover yourself up. And once you're there, and if the conversation goes very fun, simple, serious, and, and, and it's like friendly situation, you can ask them over there if they're okay with tattoos. You're not showing them, but you can ask them and wait for the answer. If they tell you that they are okay with it, now you can open up yourself and tell them that you have like five tattoos on your body and that's fine. But if they said that they're not okay, you already know that you're going to have to be covered all of the time for the job or just for the, the work time. But after you are out, that's fine. But like I'm saying, it depends on any on the company. I wish I could tell you that there's nothing wrong, that, that they are gonna be okay, but reality is different. Um, younger people will understand, but if a person who is interviewing you, it's from a different generation. And if that person was educated different, they may not like it and they, or they may, be fine with it so that's that's what i'm saying it's something very personal of you but again it's the same thing it's they may not like it considering an, an extreme situation that they may not like it i don't know but they, this may be an extreme considering uh very extreme there might be a company that they require from all of their employers to be um, to be able to donate blood in any case, because maybe uh, uh, that that's that's something that's a requirement. But this is an extreme. It's an extremo. It, it's not like something like very common. But there may be such a situation. It could happen. And, and if you just recently got a tattoo, you already know that you need to wait for either six months or five years to be able to donate blood. So that will be something to consider. Again, it's very personal, but I'm talking about a very extreme situation, but it could happen. Like I'm saying, es un caso bien extremo donde le puedan requerir eso. Sería muy raro, pero pudiera pasar, ¿no? Que le digan, oh, es que todos los, nuestros empleados tienen que ser donadores activos. Oh, all right. No, pues está bien. Y tú ya no puedes ser donador. Porque te acabas de hacer un tatuaje. Tienes que esperar tiempo. 
So that's why it, but like I'm saying, it's an extreme case. Es un caso extremo que pudiera pasar en un porcentaje muy bajo. Pero como le decía, cúbrase eh, bien y si, si la entrevista lo permite, si, si es un conocido, si está como muy amigable la entrevista, dentro de las preguntas, cuando tú ya estés preguntando, este, ya le preguntaste cosas, cosas de la empresa, de, de, de cómo es el, el ambiente aquí laboral, de, de si hay alguna habilidad en especial y ahí metí yo mis ideas, etcétera. Entonces ya les dices, oiga, y en cuestión ya muy personal, eh, ¿tienen problemas con tatuajes? Aprovecha y pregunta. Insisto, es caso de cada, cada empresa como cada cabeza es un mundo distinto. It is a very different world. So you just have to deal with and wait to see what happens. It should only be something about you, but that's fine. Look at that, now I'm more afraid and stressed. Connie, you don't need to be afraid and stressed. It's, thankfully, the world is changing and it's very well accepted everywhere, everywhere. But still, uh, for some people, they are more in traditional and they are, um, there's a lot of people who is afraid of change. And, and that's fine. What if we have health problems in my case? Uh, you should always say the truth. Like, like we say, always say the truth. Uh, if they ask you at the beginning or if they don't ask you, you should mention it. Uh, it, it will depend on the type of job. Probably if they are requiring you, Agustin, like if they're gonna tell you, oh, Do you have any problems like going in, in very high heights? Podrías tener problemas en, en, en trabajar porque a lo mejor es para un puesto de seguridad, pero, o de mantenimiento y donde vas a tener que andar, subir y bajar en, en un mismo momento. Tendrías problemas y a lo mejor ahí es donde tú tienes que decir. Uh, it's probable because I do have a situation. I, I'm under medication. Estoy siempre este, controlado pero eh, si tengo que hacer cambios de alturas tan rápidos o bruscos, pues podría dañar mi salud. Entonces, este, no, es, hay que ser honestos siempre. Eh, pero mm, generalmente no vas a encontrar algún problema. No creo. I don't think there will happen a problem about that. They may ask you, and when they finally hire you, cuando ya lo, los contratan bien ya en general, pues siempre requiere siempre siempre el el análisis médico y pues ahí viene todo y el análisis médico es un requisito porque es hay que afiliarlos al seguro, al seguro social es por ley eso ya lo saben ustedes entonces tiene que ser requisito no el, el, el análisis de, y pues porque hay que saber que, que, que si tiene algo la gente si les pasa algo es totally normal But it's not something that is going to stop you from getting a job. Your, your situation is not, is not that extreme that you can get a job. You're okay. Just remember to be honest. Remember to tell them that. If there is such a case in, in the job position that you may encounter some risk for your health, you need to make sure to tell them before you even start to consider that situation. As an example, we had a case last year on, on 2019, 2019. There is a student who had a problem with her feet. He had a, a lot of complications in his health, but um, one of the complications- Was that yes. Savala? Okay. I, I didn't want it to mention the name, but then you said it. <laughs> Sorry. I it, think yeah. Knows. Well, yeah, just, just, just like that. But um, the first position in the company that they gave him, it was hard. It was tough because he had to move too much. And, but they already knew his, his situation. So they actually suggested that uh, 
if, if he was okay, if he wanted to take some time out and he ended up dropping, uh, se salió, porque pues estaba difícil. But since he was doing fine, the person, his boss called him again and he said, we had a different position, one that you can actually work with. And so uh, they offer him a second chance, which is, he was, wow, it, that doesn't happen frequently. Like you have a second chance. And so he got back to the same company and he did a very good job on his internship. Yeah. So, and was in a different position. So like I'm saying, um, and, and because he was honest and everybody knew. Yes. Uh, any other question? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I know I understand that you're getting stressed, but uh, this is reality. Like I said at the beginning of this class, this is the eighth week, the eighth week. So it means that you only have 10 weeks left for the semester. So reality setting now, right now, and you are 10 weeks away from your internship. <laughs> Not to put more pressure on you, but this is the reality and you are getting into that <laughs> sooner or later, but it's coming sooner. You see? <laughs> All right, then, uh, with that said, I'm going to wrap up the class, finish up the class, and uh, you should expect on the platform that quiz and that portal, the, the discussion. And also, you should get ready to keep working on this for next week. And I'll see each other later then. If you have any questions, you know how to find me. You can just send me a text, WhatsApp, or you can send me some message, email, or the platform, whatever you prefer. All right. Nice seeing you. Nice listening to you. Have a safe the rest of the week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.